Hello and welcome to Making Waves by Totterbird. If you enjoy kit building, making electronic circuits, and do-it-yourself projects, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my most excellent videos. In front of us, we have the IC Station GY21121. It's an 18650 powered digital FM do-it-yourself radio kit. You can find this selling on Amazon USA for $19.99, and it's a cool radio. I know this because I built something similar from the same company, and we'll talk about it. But yeah, this kit should be really fun. It's your own FM radio. It's digital. Yeah. So let's see. We're getting a lot of parts in this one. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, let's get started. I'll go ahead and open this up, see what's in there. We'll go over the building materials. We'll go over the chart and the type of tools I'll be using. So let's check this out. So for $19.99, what do you get in the bag? All right, I'm just going to pull out this little board here. I'm going to just bring this tripod on down. Get it close and personal so we can see what's going on with these parts. And we'll open up these bags and see what we get. So in our first bag, it looks like a lot of components. Yeah. The second bag is the enclosure and the speaker with all the screws stuck to the magnet. <laughs> what are they doing? Anyway, cool, right? So the kit I was talking about that I built is this one here. And you can see the review. I'll have it in the iCard section. This guy right here. Same company, IC Station. The differences in the kits are the speaker is different. It's a round speaker now. This is a more of an oval, kind of tinny sounding. The 18650 is located at the bottom versus in the middle like that. I kind of like the idea of the battery at the bottom, especially for weight balancing and fit, because this was a pretty tight fit there. As you can see, the top of the battery is actually touching the top of this case. So I'm hoping the fit is much better with the new case. But it utilizes the same FM receiver and the same charging circuit. And I believe it has the same headphone jack as well as this radio. And that was FM stereo and sounded great. And this reception this little guy was fantastic. So looking forward to building this new kit. So let's see what it looks like. All right, set that aside. Okay, so in the kit, you saw, okay, this is the enclosure. I'm not even going to bother taking it out, but you can see a, a different kind of speaker, that round speaker. Uh, you get a clear enclosure. So the speaker goes. You can see it's got all these different sizes. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, the most time is spent putting the case together. <laughs> Set that aside there. Let's go over to parts. All right, let's get this bag. Always fun. Uh, I don't know about emptying it all at once, but let's see what we get here. We got charging cable. It's going to be a uh, micro USB, probably. Yeah, so USB to micro USB. We got an 18650 battery holder. Nice. I like 18650s, as you guys know. Especially building kits with them, it's fantastic. A lot of runtime with these kits. Okay, this is the FM module. This is cool, it's everything. FM module, everything on a chip, it's got the screen. It's got DSP, it's got the controller for the screen. Everything's right on here, which is fantastic. It just plugs right into your board. So there's not a ton going on there. It's just ready to go. Plug and play with that one. You don't have to build that, which is good. But everything else you have to build. So let's, uh, I guess, dump it out. Quicker to play. Oh, lots of parts. Okay, empty bag, I think. All right. So we get this QR code. I don't think it'll work on your video, but you can see. If it does or not, I think it's a link to the instructions. Okay, we'll go over those really quick. Um, here's the main PCB. There you go. I think it's orientated like this in the radio. Yeah, like that. So you have your FM module here. Now, if you look, there's a surface mount component we have to put on. It's an audio amplifier. The what's it? The LM4863. Yeah. You got your stereo output headphone jack there. Some resistors. This is the header pin for the FM module switches for the radio. Now it doesn't have incremental tuning, but it has a great scan and save feature. What I like about it, scans and saves, and if you scan and save again, it doesn't wipe out the other presets it finds, it just adds two. That's what the previous kit did anyway. We'll see if this one does the same. I think this is your on off switch, it's your DC input here, your micro USB. It's separated from the charging board. You can put your charging board in here. I do mine a little differently. Uh, I'll explain that. And the back here looks pretty simple. So that's your main board. Again, that looks pretty basic, except for doing that one component will probably be the hardest. Uh, they give you a battery. I tested this. This is a 1200 milliamp hour battery. I'm going to guess you're going to get 12 to 15 hours, maybe a little longer runtime, depending on how much power it draws. I'll try to make sure to test that and tell you guys uh, what it draws. Now, the cool thing about this is if you don't like this battery, you can upgrade. I've done reviews on these JustPows. 
Uh, they're about 3,000 milliamp hour, even though it says 3,300. You can upgrade from 1,200 right to 3,000. You get a two-pack of these for like seven bucks a piece. It comes out to, so it's like $14 total shipped to your door from Amazon. And if you don't want to do Amazon, you could do like XH Data Direct and get their unprotected button tops. They'll fit in that holder as well. Uh, these test anywhere from 26 to 2,800 milliamp hours. Uh, and this battery, I think two-pack for like $11 shipped. So that's pretty cool. So there you go. Got some options for you. I'll try to link it in the bottom in the paid link section for you guys. If you like this kit. So there's the battery. Rock on. The charging board's a pretty basic setup. You'll see these in a lot of lithium kits. You got your input there, which we won't be using. We'll be using a different one. Cool. The whip antenna. When the kit was made. There you go. January 2024. We got the, let's like audio. Yes, it's our headphone jack. All right. Uh, pretty much you can see resistors here. I'm not going to go through everything, but we got switches and we got buttons. Here's a on-off switch. It's a little different. It's more mechanical on, mechanical off. It's not momentary like these others. With the longer posts. And then the most important thing here is probably going to be this little surface mount, dude. Yeah, that's not even going to come into focus, probably. But there it is. It might come into focus. And it's upside down, isn't it? Of course it is. <laughs> There it is. Okay, so that's our audio amplifier. Okay, that's going to be fun. Now, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to do a drag uh, soldering method. Now, when I do these projects, I usually just do photos of, as the process as I go and I talk about it because, you know, there's a lot of tutorials on how to solder. I'm not going to show you guys how to solder because there's tons of them on there. It's so easy um, It's once you practice. So, yeah, I'll be using, like, a small iron like this, and I'll just tack one leg down. I can't get this into the focus, but I'll tack one leg down on the board, then I'll just drag, take some solder on the point, and drag it across these legs. If there's any bridges, I clean my iron really well, get it really dry, and I just take the point and draw it through like that to draw any bridges away. And the solder will stay on the legs. It'll just remove from between the legs if you bridge. So, yeah, it's that simple. Um, practice, uh, you know, if you can with those practice kits. But this is not this is probably the hardest part of the whole thing. And everything else is through whole components. So there's all the parts. Wow, that's a ton of stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to just kind of push, I guess, it all to the back here. Fun time. Let's go over the iPad real quick. I just kind of wanted to the basic. Got it right here. The screen's probably going to get a little wonky with me. Just bear with me. Now, if you need this PDF file because it's not on their site anymore, you can download it direct. I downloaded it right to my iPad, which is cool. So here it is, talking about the kit. Um, I could probably get a little close, closer to it. There you go. Talks a little bit about it. Okay. You can see. Again, it's pretty simple. I don't think you need to see see all this. It's just pretty much I'm just showing you for posterity. How <clears throat> they do this? There's a schematic. Again, it's a pretty basic thing. Freeze frame that if you need to see it. it should come out. Okay. I think I have photos. So I'm just going right to the photos. So there you go, there's installing the surface mount. And again, you can zoom in on your picture, which is nice if you got an iPad or a computer. You could probably do the same. Let me show you attacking one leg, spot with solder, and putting another leg down and using tweezers to hold it in place as you finish it up. You could try doing each leg at a time. Again, I'm going to do the drag method just to get it done quickly. And you can see they're just putting through all components in, resistors, Capacitor, here's a capacitor, there's our charging board. Now they're showing it uh, just filled with solder. I don't like this setup. I actually use bus wire. It's this stuff right here. It's just a hard wire, um, electrical conductive, and I just put that through and I solder it to the board and then I solder it to the PCB. So this is a nice way to do it. You could also use uh, excess component legs, you know, like the ones you trim off from your resistors. Save those little legs and you can use them as bus wire as well. You don't have to have dedicated wire like this. So I'm just going to be using that. So there's that. And we're almost through here. So I want to just show you this. I'm going to show you some tools. And then we'll go right to building this. So again, real simple. we got a capacitor. we got a header pin for the FM module. Everything that looks like before we add the FM module. Looks like, oh, yeah, we had some switches first. Okay, so we got switches. And speaker wiring. Antenna wiring. Okay. They have you blobbing it. I don't know if I want to do that or not. I don't think I'll do that unless I have to. And there's our FM module plugging in. Of course, you got to make sure you cut that first pin off they're talking about. And then 
that's it. And assembling it, yeah, this is the fun part where you're assembling everything. Of course, you can test it before you build the enclosure to make sure everything's working. That's what I would do. And at this point, figure out what battery you're going to use. Okay, so that's it for the instructions. Again, if you need them, just ask. I can email them to you. Tools I like to use. The soldering braid in case I make mistakes. Yeah. The solder I'm going to use. I don't say solder. I'm not British or English. Solder. I'm American. So we say solder here in the States. <laughs> if you're wondering. Uh, so there's that. Uh, again, that bus wire. Uh, I have some pliers I like to use. They're kind of angled. These are nice for tightening up screws. And then I got some flush cut pliers here. There you go. Get nice component legs cut off flush. Yeah, those are nice flush cut. And these are made in the USA. We like our tools made in the USA. Safety glasses required. And there it is, made in USA. I love that part. And then, of course, you saw the iron tip I'm going to be using. I'm using a Hacko uh, soldering station. It's kind of off camera. It's FX 951. It's a variable temp deal. This is kind of how it's set up. These are the things it uses. It's really nice. Um, you don't have to buy something that's fancy. You know, 25 watt, 30 watt iron will be just fine. You know, like a weller with a fine tip. That's all you need. And I, I recommend using a lead uh, tin based like I use here. 6040. That's the stuff with rosin core. Uh, it, uh, lower melting temp, just smoother joints. That's the way to go. And I think, yeah, I mean, I, you got your typical, you know, if you need your tools for fastening the devices. You got your little Phillips, and I got a little flathead if I need a little flathead. And then, of course, uh, inspecting the board. I usually use, like, a 10-power loop. This guy right here. I can see things up close and personal. How are my nails doing? How are my tools? Oh, there we go. Okay, you get the idea. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just take one look at the uh, board again, and then we'll fade to black. We'll go to pictures of the build process. And then we'll demo the radio and see how it went. So, we got a FM module here. We got our PCB board. The battery. I'll probably use a stock battery just because it's there. It's cool they ship with the battery. Uh, I think the other kit it did not. Charging board. Oh, the little service mount, dude. <laughs> and, of course, everything else that you saw. There's all the little switches and stuff. Yay. Fun. Charging cable. You got it. You know it. Again. Should be fun. Like I said, the only thing I anticipate is putting that little dude on. <laughs> Alrighty. So when I come back, this pile of parts will be a finished radio. Okay. Hang in there and fade to black. Here are pictures of the build process. I added the LM4863 audio amplifier IC to the PCB using the drag solder method. Note pin 1 orientation. Next, I populated the board with three resistors, one monolithic capacitor, battery charging board, micro USB jack, and stereo headphone jack. Now I added one electrolytic capacitor, no polarity, a female header for the FM module, remove the first pin located nearest to the speaker output connections. Also installed five momentary switches and the on off power switch. Now I attached the FM antenna using the provided hardware, then I followed their advice and soldered it in place. I'd recommend using a wide tip and a high temperature setting. Flux will also help. For a final picture here, it was time to test the radio circuit before adding it to the case. Pretty important to do this. I measured the current used by the radio at this time and I observed some interesting results. So in front of us, we have the finished product. Awesome! <laughs> so this is it, yeah. We're going to do a little mini review on the kit and give you my impressions and final thoughts. So, dimensions of this kit is 4.5 inches wide, 4 inches tall, and a thickness of 1 and 3 eighths of an inch. Pretty awesome. Put it next to the existing kit that I made. Now they sell both of these, I checked. And they're both the same price, $19.99 cool thing is you get the battery with this one. I'm not sure if they include the 18650 with this kit now as well. I remember I had to provide my own for this one. But as you notice, I did not use the included battery. I used my own higher capacity battery. I'll explain why in a little bit. But there you go. Two differences. I'll try to do just a little bit of an audio demo so you can hear the difference as well. Um, this is a tinny sounding speaker. This is a more bass tone or mid-range to it. 
I prefer the, the brighter tone of the speaker here and other things I like about this radio. So we'll talk about that when I do my final thoughts. I'll move that out of the way. Let's go over this radio, its features, and how well it performed. And we'll do a little demo. Yeah, so let's zoom it back down. And let's look at how it was built. So when I got this, uh, the case was actually cracked, unfortunately. Right here. Eh, not a big deal. It's not structural too much. But it was kind of annoying to see that. Um, I didn't do it. <laughs> it looks like I might have, but I didn't. Um, that was one little defect I found in the case, but it wasn't correct on the front or back, which is good for aesthetics. Liking that. There's our speaker, held by four screws. Our 18650 just laying on the bottom there, but it is fastened, um, which is nice. There you go. Our main circuit board, you can see the battery charging circuit attached. And we had to do the extra jack here to micro USB because you can't reach the internal one there on the micro board. Seems kind of redundant, but there you go. Um, you can see the switches here. You got five momentary and a power switch. Now, the one thing I noticed, if you see here, these are raised up a little higher than these others. That's because I had to put tape in there to hold them in place. Otherwise, they would just fall off. Yeah, I don't know why. Bad design. FM module in place. There's the audio amplifier back there. We're going to talk about that. And then we got our FM antenna, which I had to solder in place as well. Because the little screw and nut they give you doesn't hold it very well. So I definitely had to use some solder. I soldered over the head of the screw and pretty much most of the, the nut there on the back, if you can see that. Some standoffs for the back PCB. You can see this thing has a huge magnet for the speaker. Um, so you get a little thump to it. I like that. Cool. And then there's the battery I used, the Jezpal 3000. Yeah, it's going to stay in there for eternity. It's not fun putting the case together. Like I mentioned, it takes up most of the time. So functions. Power. Turning it on. It takes a while for it to boot up for some reason. Where we get audio. There we go. This button here is our scan and save and mute. So we'll mute the audio. Um, you can set it so the light's always on or stays on for 20 seconds then turns off. Right now I have it set for always on. And I'll explain how to do that here. So you got your five buttons. First two are volume. Second two are presets to navigate up and down. And of course auto is for your muting and for press and hold to auto scan and save the presets. Now I did notice on my older radio, they must have changed something with the module. You could scan and save and it can keep, keep adding to the existing preset pool. This one here overwrites the pool. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, so if you do buy the older kit, you might get the updated module, and it might do the same thing. So just letting you know. Like if you're like, oh, no, then I want this one, Totterbert. Well, they may have changed it. And I'm guessing they probably did. But that's just, well, how it is. But <laughs> so that's how that works there. I muted it. Um, I got some Radio Totterbert on 97.7 with a FM transmitter off to the right here. And we'll listen to a little bit of music. But before we get started, I do want to cover the buttons. Our speaker here is two inches. Uh, it's pretty small, but like I said, heavy driven. I'm using, like I say, I'm not using the included battery uh, because this thing draws a lot of current. And we're going to explain that in a second. Uh, but yeah, this is a 1200 and that's 3000. So there's a big reason why I'm using the 3000 to get extra life out of the radio. So yeah, um, you can see our display. It's got a really bright backlight to it. We have antenna strength showing it's muted. Our frequency we're on. There you go. I'm at the right angle to show you. I guess you got the volume controls. Uh, before you power the radio on, if you press and hold the two volume keys here, the first two buttons, and you turn the radio off and turn the radio on, holding those two, it goes into what they call the campus band. What the campus band is 76 to 108. If you repeat the process, it goes back to 86 to 108. So you have two choices of FM bands. To turn the light um, from always on to every uh, turning off at 20 seconds, you press and hold the two program keys, three and four. Just press and hold these as you turn the power on, and it will let you uh, change that backlight setting. So I'm just leaving it on for the sake of the video. Yeah. And then the last one, of course, I talked about. Our charging board, of course, is separate from here. Our input is 5 volt 1 amp, so it does charge this battery fairly quickly. Um, though I did notice it took a while to trickle charge to the end, so probably like six hours for a battery that size. Um, so just letting you know, it doesn't do it really super fast. <laughs> it cuts back. Headphone jack. Headphone experience. You know it has FM stereo, and I really love it, but I'll tell you what. This kit, do not install the headphone jack. There's a reason. When I had this out and I was testing it, 
I tested the amp, amp draw on this radio and it was crazy high when you plugged in headphones. And what the heck is that about, right? So let's explain. Uh, so when I tested the output of this radio amperage wise, so I get an idea how long this would run so you guys would know, um, I measured a draw on this radio of, uh, let's see, 150 to 300 milliamps for the speaker. It's about right. I mean, it's pulling pretty good. It's a three watt speaker. It's pushing. Um, and if you got the volume up, you know, you, I'd watch it changing, you know, up and down. Uh, so, but when you plug in headphones, it's supposed to disengage the speaker and only use the headphones. And it should be a really low current draw, right? No. When you plug in headphones, it boosts the must volume all the way up on the speaker, but mutes the speaker. You can almost hear the audio coming out of here at really low tone. But you have the headphones in this. I measured uh, two thirds of an amp, so 600 milliamps, uh, up to 700 milliamps. And I noticed the chip on that back there, the audio amplifier getting very hot. So I recommend not installing this headphone jack. And it's a bad design. And I'm really upset by that because you would think headphone jack, low power consumption, rock and roll, FM stereo, <clears throat> fantastic. But nope, not in the case of this kit. And I thought, well, maybe I should check the other kit as well. Well, this kit's a little better. <laughs> um, though it does have the same headphone fault. You plug the headphones in, you actually hear a click. An audible click that something's going on. You know, it's firing the speaker. So it's firing the speaker full volume even though it's muted and you have your headphones in. Again, just a bad circuit design is my guess. Uh, this one here measured around 400 milliamps. Probably less because the speaker isn't as demanding at full volume even though it's muted. Um, that's my guess. But when you're using just the speaker only, it doesn't draw much because it's a very simple paper speaker. Again, high tinny sound to it. Uh, you can expect the sound to be... Um, you know, rather high pitched, but your draw is around 50 to 70 milliamps. So this is the one to get if you want to listen to the radio at a quiet setting. Uh, you're not too interested in bass or heavy tones. Classical music, news talk, it would sound great on here. I recommend this kit over this one. But let's have a little radio demo and then uh, we'll do final thoughts, even though I just gave you most of my impressions. <laughs> okay, let's turn the volume up. All right. See, this is weird how the volume is backwards. So the first button, volume up, volume down. basic idea for the sound. It's Rito Tadabur using a Sucrean transformer. Transformer transmitter. <laughs> Turned it off. Let's see if we can do a quick uh, FM scan and then we'll do final thoughts. Spent some time on this video, but it's a cool little kit and giving you some impressions. You know, for 20 bucks. Alright. So I hooked up a little wire to the radio just to give a little extra space out of my basement because it's sub-floor here. 
and we're going to go and see what kind of presets it found. So we're going to navigate those by these two buttons. for cancer and he praised vice president kamala harris as tough capable and an incredible partner he was using the trappings of power in the christian point of living in this world um Daily newspaper. He's pleaded not guilty to charges of conspiracy. Oh, to place Stonehenge on the list of endangered world heritage sites. Residents and archaeologists are concerned that British government plans to build a nearby highway tunnel threaten the landscape around the prehistoric monument. Stonehenge is one of the country's biggest... get the idea there it is yeah it's found about 53 stations about average okay to good rating uh right in the middle of normal radios it's an auto scan save so you get what you get um so there it is the ic station i think it's a 20 21121 uh, i think i got that right oh uh, yeah i mean is it worth it uh i'll tell you what so if you like the audio of this yes if you're, you're not okay headphones i'll tell you what if you're building either kit leave the headphone jack off uh that sounded bad. Do not install the headphone jack. <laughs> Do not install the headphone jack. Yeah, a little humor in my video, right? So, leaving that off, you won't have to worry about uh, high power draws and overheating an amplifying chip, uh, amplifier chip, amplifying. You get the idea. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know why they did it that way or what's going on, but uh, that's exactly what's happening. So, leave off the same kit. Take that off. Oh, this one's on still. Uh, yeah, take off the headphone jack. Don't use it. Uh, and like I said, this draws the least power. This is going to run the longest for you. Um, yeah, you're going to get a long run time. On the stock battery, you'll get 20 hours. Uh, on this one, you'll get about 10 or 12. Okay, so, uh, maybe. No, wait, four. Sorry. <laughs> four to five, maybe, on a stock battery. So you may have to upgrade uh, from this one to a bigger capacity. Because, I, this, like I said, the draw on this one, I measured anywhere from, was it like... 150 to 300, yeah, milliamps. And if you only got 1,200, you can do the math. It's not that long. You know, on the low end, eight hours. On the high end, four hours. So, yeah, um, you're going to want to do a higher capacity battery. But I would prefer you get this kit here. And I'll have links to this one as well 
and the video there uh, to pick this one up. Definitely the one to get. It's actually smaller too. It uses the same module. So there you are. That's my impressions. Um, yeah, this is good if you got to have the low tones and the mid range. You really like that. You like the sound. You get this one. But you got to go with the higher capacity battery. If you just want some bright audio and just some fun, get the other key. <laughs> That's it. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you watching. It took a little while to make this video, but I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, of course, if you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe at the bell icon and get notified of future IC Station radio kits. I do enjoy building radios, and I hope you do too, because it's a lot of fun having your own radio kit. Um, and, and learning how to test things. Use your multimeter. Test that current draw. Figure out what this radio is doing. And then you'll know, okay, wow, that, there's something up with this thing. And maybe you can adjust it or change it yourself as well. This one here, I couldn't find a way to really change it because it's all hardwired to the board. But if there was a way to do it, I would do it. And of course, three, comment below, you think about the 21, or sorry, 211-21 versus the, ah, I forget what this one is, the 18-something-something, something-something, G18971. Uh, you know, let me know which one uh, you would pick since you get to hear them together. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in my next video.